Yo, what is going on everybody? This is Mystical and it is patch 8.1 and I'm finally going to give you guys a guide on how to use Way of the Crane. Now, it's taking me so long because I was queuing a lot uh, in the previous patch and um, then they announced 8.1 so I wasn't sure if they were going to make any changes to like Azari traits or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I held down until 8.1 and there really weren't that many changes, if any, to Way of the Crane and the playstyle. So... Yeah, here we go. So there's two important questions I'm gonna try and answer in this video, and it's how to use Way of the Crane and when to use Way of the Crane. Those are the two most important questions uh, that need to go through your mind when you're trying to figure out, you know, when you when you start playing Way of the Crane. So I'm gonna try and answer the second question is when to use Way of the Crane. Uh, for those of you who don't know or you're new to Miss Fever. Uh, Way of the Crane is a one minute cooldown, costs 25,000 mana, which is one fourth of your mana. And it increases your physical damage by 35%. So, physical damage is your melee, it's your Rising Sun Kick, it's your Blackout Kick, and it's also your Tiger Palm. And you remove and become immune to all snare and root effects. So, unlike in Legion, uh, where it broke stuns, in BFA it doesn't do that anymore, which is fine, it still works. And then you heal up to three nearest allies for 200% of all damage done, and this lasts for 15 seconds. So for 15 seconds, you're doing an insane amount of melee damage. Uh, you could also heal, just because it increases your melee damage, uh, doesn't mean you can't heal with the uh, Crackling Jade Lightning. You could still do that if you want to, uh, towards the end, but uh, for sure, for like 95% of the duration, uh, you want to be up close and personal with... Uh, you know the enemy team and uh attacking them like right in their face uh which is good and bad it's good because you're doing a lot of damage it's bad because it, it forces you to to get out of position uh from the pillar so let's say you're behind the pillar you got a nice little port here and let's say you're playing against i don't know rogue death knight i don't know for some reason you know unholy dk's got buffed assassination rogues are still pretty solid and you're like oh, okay let me press crane and then you go in you press crane boom it's, they swap to you kidney shot you and then kill you so that's obviously not something you want to do, right? You basically want to pair it with Manatee. Now, Manatee reduces the cost of all your spells by 50% for 12 seconds. Uh, this means that Way of the Crane drops from 25,000 to 12,500 mana, which is really good. The awkward part is that Manatee has a minute and a half cooldown and Crane has a minute cooldown. So you're going to be stuck in situations where you're going to be asking yourself, is it really worth to Crane if I don't have Manatee? And that really depends on the situation and what you're playing against. So... Uh, it's definitely whatever you're playing against, what kind of comp you're playing against, what's your overall strategy. If you're looking for a kill, early kill, on like maybe your second or third go, maybe crane the second time around without manatee is worth it, and then you can manatee the third way of the crane. That's fine. Um, what I do recommend, however, is when manatee is active, uh, you just press, you know, your soothing mist, and then hot your teammates up, you know, with uh, renewing mist and stuff, and then press crane. And then press crane while manatee is active. Because, you know, no matter... How, uh, oh, one million? My god. Um, it doesn't matter how long manatee is left. As long as there's still a 0 0.01 time left on manatee, you can press crane and it's 12,500 mana. So that's the when uh, as far as talents go. So another question about when you should use way the crane is actually depends on what you're playing against and what you're playing um if you're in two's arena i use it in every single matchup every single one except for demon hunter uh demon hunter is the only one that i try to avoid playing where the crane against um i know that mana break or mana burn just got nerfed but they still do a lot of damage and they can still um you uh, if they're playing um long in cap and then they coordinate mana burns with their healers it's um definitely troublesome and then in threes, I avoid playing against Demon Hunters and then RMP. Those are the only two. Those are the only two times I don't play Crane. In every other game, I play Crane. Um, now, it's, a, it's definitely a playstyle preference. I enjoy being super aggressive against teams. I like being in, in on the kill with my teammates. Some people don't. So, you know, you don't have to play Crane every time. You know, you could definitely play... Counteract Magic, which then focus T if playing against Shadow Priest Boomy or Shadow Priest uh, Ellie Shaman. You definitely want to play Crane versus Boomies because where the Crane is a one minute cooldown and their Root Beam is a one minute cooldown. So it lines up really well.
which w ties right into what I was about to say. When should you use it when you're playing against these comps? Like for example, the Boomy. Against Boomy teams, you want to play. Cr you want to press Crane every time you get root beamed. Every time you see beam, you want it to line up with the root beam so they can't get any long CC chains on you. You know, you you can weigh the crane every root beam. Um, and then outside of that next specific situation, anytime after you get CC'd is a good time to press crane. So for example, let's say you're playing against Turbo and they're starting to burst and the warrior fears you. Hopefully you're playing, maybe you're playing Turbo and then your shaman can drop a tremor and then you press crane because you have to recover from the... Um, the uh, fear damage. You could also use crane while silenced from a priest or locked out versus anybody, right? Oh, and corroded, corroded silenced. So you could, anytime you're interrupted and you can't cast or silenced, you can press crane, which is really good. So let's get into the two different rotations, I guess. You write the rotation priority list, it, either one, it doesn't matter. So there's two different ways. Uh, the first way is if you have Thunder Focus D. So Thunder Focus T empowers your Rising Sun Kick. It empowers a bunch of abilities, but most importantly for where the crane, it empowers your Rising Sun Kick and reduces the cooldown by nine seconds, which is really good. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press Manatee. And again, you can press Manatee and then you could use Enveloping Mist on you or a partner. You see, got my overflowing mist up, you know, putting hots on everybody, searching mist top somebody. And then you wanna go in, you wanna press Crane, Thunder Focus T, Wild Trinket, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. And then we didn't get the reset on the Rising Sun Kick, so now you got a double Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick. We got the reset, boom, Rising Sun Kick. Pretty fast rotation, I know. So basically, uh, I hate I hate using, basically, I think, because there's nothing really basic about it. I think where the Crane is one of the hardest abilities to, uh, to maximize, but... You have a passive called Teachings of the Monastery. Uh, Tiger Palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time. Oh. Stacking up to three times. Uh, and then blackout kicks a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm trying to reset uh, Rising Sun Kick is I'm trying to get boom, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm to get uh, three Teachings of Monastery. Blackout kick hits for four times and then that it gives a really good chance of resetting. So let's say we Rising Sun Kick here. We got three stacks of Teaching Monastery. Blackout Kick, boom, it gets reset. So good. And then you just double two Teaching Monastery. Blackout Kick, maybe it resets again. It doesn't. Just do it again. No. Sometimes you're unlucky. But sometimes you're super lucky and you're, you get, you know, it gets reset over and over. You're doing so much damage, you can just easily get a kill. So then the other way is really awkward. The other way is really used when you're when you get locked or if you get um, root beamed or something where you don't have, maybe if you don't have manatee active or something and you just need to do damage, like you don't have time to set it up or you have time to set it up, uh, you're gonna need to triple stack tiger palm. It's super awkward, right? Like you know, you don't find many situations, but you can however taunt a pet and try and get, uh, you know, a Tiger Palm here. It, it lasts 20 seconds, the buff is like 20 seconds. So a Tiger Palm there, you know, now you got three stacks. Okay, so now you have damage to burst. So now it's basically the same rotation. You're gonna want a Manatee, hot yourself up. You know, I still got 17 seconds left, 17 seconds on Teaching Monastery. Boom, boom. And now we got Manatee still up. I'll put my weak words in the description down below. We're gonna weigh the crane, trinket, and then we're gonna rising sun kick, blackout kick. Do we get the reset? We didn't. So we want two tiger palm into blackout kick. Do we get the reset? No. So now we tiger palm, tiger palm, tiger palm, rising sun kick, blackout kick, and then we get the reset, boom, rising sun kick. So the priority is to use tiger palm to generate stacks of teachings of monastery. Use Blackout Kick when you have uh, two. You, you can really use that any amount of stacks. I like to do uh, two or three, you know. Uh, make sure you use Rising Sun Kick and then Blackout Kick. And then if it resets, Rising Sun Kick. If it doesn't, Tiger Palm. Blackout Kick. Tiger Palm. If it doesn't reset, Blackout Kick. Doesn't reset. Still get, use Tiger Palm to get stacks of Teaching the Monastery. Boom. Rising Sun Kick. So, yeah. Um... 
that's that those are the two rotations for way of the crane oh something i forgot to mention okay so let's say you just you're playing against i don't know you're playing against tsg right playing against dk and warrior they both have really good slows right and let's say you use port let's say i just use port and now my port's right there but you want to reset your port and you, your crane is finishing up let's just uh do uh crane rotation this is probably the most important thing about crane you want to use the last maybe last second right or maybe two to roll away and then reposition your port right here reposition it now what does that do what's the point sure you're missing out on damage but you're immune to you're immune to roots and snares. That's really good, and that's a problem for monks. Is that they just pruned our Elon's gift? Don't ask me why. They got rid of it. So now our slow our our roll is just a gap like creator, and they have charge. They have grip. So what this does is you can cheat torpedo away while while crane is active, and you can't be slowed, and it just lets you gives you more freedom. You can't get slowed. Removes them. And then you get to place port, and then let's say they, they grip you or stun you back in right afterwards, you port. In the threes, I don't do anything special with Way of the Crane. You know, I think uh, two overflowing mist and one burst is insane. But in twos, I do something a little different. I use Sunrise Technique. Uh, attacking a target with Rising Sun Kick causes your damaging melee abilities to deal 362 more physical damage. Uh, more damage is more healing. That's basically what it comes down to. I use one overflowing, and then I have one battlefield precision. Uh, what this does is it puts a, um, not a dot, but a debuff on your, on an enemy. It, it's a proc, and then increases damage taken from members of, on my team by 1,000, which is really good. It, it's so good. I'm t Way of the Crane, so good for twos. It, it gives you so much pressure. Uh, you can use it offensively and defensively. You know, uh, obviously it's completely dependent on your play style. Some people like to play super defensive and some people like to play really aggressive. It really, you know, it really comes down to the situation. I personally, I, I play a little bit, a little bit of uh, both of them. In twos, I'm really aggressive. In twos, I try and stay as aggressive as possible. I'll even be attacking, attacking targets. Even if I don't have, even if I don't have crane active, you know, I, I'm just trying to get in there, trying to help do as much damage as I can. Um, uh, now defensively is when you use crane for solar beam, root beam, um, or when you get locked out, that's when you want to defensively play, play crane. When you see that the shaman has shear and they're about to pop to, um, burst, let's say you eat the shear and then you press crane, right? So now you're sheared, but you're still healing, you know, a lot because you have crane active. Uh, aggressively is probably what you're going to be is a play style you got, you're going to want in twos you definitely want to be aggressive with way of the crane because it's first it's just a lot of damage and it's a lot of healing um you sh no one should be able to get a kill while way of the crane is active and then in threes it depends on what you're playing against but if you're playing against a team with like like tsg or something you can just be aggressive with that when your team starts dipping low a little bit just press crane if you're playing against like Shadow Priest Ellie Shaman and you start getting a little low, just press Crane with Manatee. Should be fine. You you won't Oom versus Dot Cleaves that much because you have Kenner Magic. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for Way of the Crane. I went through when, as far as talents, how to use it defensive or aggressive. And then I went through the, the two um, rotations that you have. So if you have any other questions, like feel free to, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you everybody for stopping by. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend and I'll see you later.